Well, it is approximately, well, I'm not wearing a watch, so there's that, but I have a pile of things in my office that have to be dealt with and they all have one thing in common. Well, hello friend, I'm Mary Beth with At What Cost, where simple living and deep faith go hand in hand. So the thing that all of these things have in common is they are part of a thing that I learned about in Bible study yesterday. So buckle up because we're going to be talking about Jesus today. And y'all know I am an advocate for not tote shuffling and moving my clutter all over the place, but it's also nighttime and I'm a working mom who has kids sleeping in the room right above where I need to declutter. So the pile's not that large. I'm going to move everything out here to our kitchen table and start going through some of this. I also know that there are some homeschooling items in there. We don't homeschool. Again, like if we, yeah. Hmm. So we're gonna go through some of that stuff, get it organized where I keep some of those other items that I actually probably need to go through while I'm at it and get this whole little pile of deferred decisions and what ifs out of here. The study that we are doing talked about seasonal obsessive disorder. And this is totally a made up term by this Bible study teacher, but it's amazing. And it totally, it was like all the things started clicking. So it's really focusing on a season of life that you're not in, a season of life that you wish that you may have been in. And basically all of these deferred decisions, these what if, or if then statements that we make, like if I had this, then I could do that. Or if I had more time, I could finish this project. I'm going to hang on to this so that if I do decide to do this again, I'll have it. Yeah, we've all been there. I got a whole pile of this in the office right now that I need to deal with. I have had this for 10 years and have never actually been able to successfully use it. I'm hoping someone else can. Anyone else ever just have a bag of bags? I'm cleaning out this box mostly because I need a donation box for all of this curriculum stuff that I'm going to pass along and anything else in this pile. So I want to use a box that I don't have to bring back home with me. Okay, now there is an important note to make here because I can get real sidetracked real fast and I bet you can too. So the goal tonight is to get through this pile. Now, is my kitchen a mess? 
yellow bit. It just, you know, even having things very simplified and getting rid of things when we need to, keeping up on your dishes, all of those things, okay? It can be achieved, it can rock out, and then every now and then we just have one of those days where work has been ridiculously demanding, it's three weeks left until school is out, everybody's a little crazy, and some things just have to wait and get done tomorrow. So another one of these like if-then statements for me is that, well, if I could get the kitchen cleaned up, then I can go ahead and get all this decluttering done. The problem is I get everything else done and then I don't have any energy or time left for the decluttering. Now the kitchen, I can very easily clean up at the end when I get done, if I can still keep going. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll just get it in the morning and it will be okay. So I'm feeling like my mom was not impressed with my ability to wave a stick around. <laughs> See, this is one of those if then projects. So I have a recipe card collection that is all in this same print. My mom gave it to me and it has all of our favorite family recipes, even back to my great great grandmother. There are some recipes of hers in there and I love it. And I had these high hopes of putting together a recipe book of my own and our dog chewed it like 12 years ago. But I keep thinking, if I could just fix this corner, then I can use all of this wonderful, like, deliciousness that is this potential cookbook. <sighs> Life is hard, friends. Page protectors, like, oh, hmm. The pages don't turn very well though. And the more important part is I don't really use a cookbook all that often. Does anybody? I do have some printable paper though. Oh, and some recipes. What are these? Yep, it's time. Maybe someone else will. I have this recipe about 16 million times somewhere else. Maybe someone else will be able to use this wonderful goodness. Well, there you go, friends. Now you really can tell exactly how old this box is. Yes. I am gonna see if my husband wants any of these resistance bands or weights, and I'm guessing he has not been just like dying to have yoga booty ballet. So we're gonna pass that along. Did anyone else have any of those late night infomercial like college purchases? <laughs> yeah. So all of this sparked from a verse in Colossians. It's in chapter three and it's verse one, and we're gonna read all the way through verse four. So it says, if then, I, this is the if then, this is the only if then that we actually get to live in. So side note on that one. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is 
seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So there is no if then any longer. There is only right now. And right now we are looking to things from above, not the things on earth. So that doesn't mean that we have to just get rid of everything and only hang on to the things that we absolutely need. That is not at all what this is saying. But the amount of time that I spend worrying about some of these things or shuffling them around the overwhelm and stress that i can feel just walking into my office day in and day out looking at this pile it just gets overwhelming especially if these piles are all over your house like it was for me not too long ago so as i'm going through these items things like homeschooling items. These are for a season when I really felt like our kids needed a lot of extra help and I was going to be able to do that. The problem was our season of life just didn't really allow for that. Our kids definitely needed the academic support, but at home because of their background and the way that our family came to be through adoption and foster care, they needed some good solid attachment and security and snuggles long before they needed all of the extra academic help that I really wanted to give them but just didn't have the time to do. Now they're in a place where they feel a lot more secure and so the academic skills are coming right along and I don't need quite as much stuff at home to be able to do with them. I kind of need to sort through all of these things and really just hang on to the things that matter most and live in this season of life. The everyday, day in, day out, what we need to do, what's right in front of us, and what is going to bring the most glory to God. And I can tell you firsthand knowledge here, it's not hanging on to a bunch of what ifs. Well, I hope that you found this decluttering inspiring and that you too have been encouraged to add a little bit of decluttering in the nooks and crannies of your day, even if it's at the end of the day and you just have to let some things go so that you can get this done. I hope that you're able to find some of that time to do that as well. And if you would like to learn more about how you too can deepen your faith through simple living, you can click the playlist right up here and I will see you in the next video.